Hi there everyone, Michael Beresford here from OpenCorp for today's Property Wealth Wad. Recently I did a video on talking about negative gearing, obviously it's everywhere in the media at the moment, what the federal labour policy was, what the federal liberal policy was on the back of Scott Morrison's speech at um, the press club uh, recently and what I thought I'd do today is just a bit of a follow up on that just to understand um, why both parties are only making modified changes, if anything, to negative gearing policy. And really it comes down to where the jobs are in Australia. So we always hear the political parties talking about jobs and growth and all of those kind of buzzwords that are important to us. Um, here is, according to the ABS, this is data from about 12 months ago, the most recent data that we have, on how Australians are employed by industry. Okay, so, up the top, the health sector, about 1.4 million Australians work in health. About one and a quarter million Australians work in retail. Construction is number three at 1.055 million. So we've got over a million workers in Australia that work in construction. So any change that's gonna impact a strong construction sector is obviously gonna have a massive impact on, uh, on jobs and confidence as a result. Manufacturing, we hear so much about that. Just under a million people still employed in manufacturing in Australia. And the good one, mining, we hear that that's been pumping at recent times. Only 218,000 people. Okay, so there's nearly five times the number of people that work in mining working in construction. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Couple this video with the one I did recently on negative gearing, and that'll give you an overall snapshot on some of the fundamentals behind the policy decisions that um, will be coming out over the next six to nine months as we lead up to a, uh, a likely November election. Bye for now.